Hey guys, it's Coach Greg Leon here. This is another edition of our Gag Schools Update. It's our Road to 198 series. If this is your first time stopping by, I'm Coach Gag Leon. Uh, I've been involved in powerlifting and strength coaching for over 13 years. Uh, and this is kind of chronicling my weight loss journey. Uh, I've been as heavy as 340 pounds and uh, on my way back down to the 198 class, which is where I kind of started my journey as a, as, in powerlifting as a teenager. So just kind of trying to be leaner, healthier, stronger, and just have a good balance. So. Uh, if you've been following along, uh, you may or may not know uh, that I kind of kind of tweaked my shoulder back in March of this year. So I haven't really had a really solid bench session uh, up until this past week. So things are on the up and up. Um, at my last meet, I, I had to basically um, drop around my projected opener a good, you know, almost almost 100 pounds, uh, a good, you know, at least a good, you know, 60, 70 pounds. So I was only really able to take a token, what I would consider kind of like a token bench uh, and a loose bench shirt. Um, so I ended up, uh, it was, and again, it was sloppy. It took me three tries to get it because I wasn't able to lock out my left arm efficiently. My right arm was kind of doing all of the work, but I was able to bench 415 in my last contest. Uh, it's been a struggle. And then at the time of that contest, I, like I said, if I, if, you, if I had a gun to my head, I'm not even sure if I, if I could have benched uh, you know, 2.30 raw on that, that particular day. It was really bad. Um, and again, it was nothing acute. It was kind of like an overuse thing. Uh, but things have been getting better and better uh, with the help of a lot of different people like Dr. Albury and some other people. I've uh, been kind of just doing some exercises to kind of rehab it. If you look at our, uh, our shoulder health video, um, I got some kind of insight on some of the things I've been doing. If you're interested, you do have some, if you had some shoulder issues in the past, but anyway, uh, this was like our, my, fir my first good bench workout I've had in a long time. Uh, things are on the up and up. I still, uh, my raw strength is not quite back to 100%, but it's been improving each week. And I've been trying to just follow like a really basic linear progression with bench, uh, which is usually a good idea when you're coming off an injury or coming off a meet. Uh, it's just adding a little bit of weight to the bar uh, slowly over time. It's always kind of a good approach, especially when you're uh, you know, kind of starting from square one. So even uh, like after the meet, I just literally started at like 135 uh, and just progressed from there. Uh, so now my raw bench, I worked up to, uh, this is the most I've done this, this cycle uh, since the meet, so I worked up to 285. And that was kind of like the first set where uh, I felt like my, I was starting to compensate a little bit up until then, like I said, 225, 255 have all been uh, pretty smooth uh, as far as the technique. Um, another thing that I've been kind of working on as well is just getting a little bit of a more stable foundation, so I just kind of widening, widening my feet out a little bit, uh, taking um, a page out of Bench and Benny's book a little bit. He gets very wide, so I kind of just want to give myself a little bit more stability, and that's definitely been helping. Um, so I will continue to kind of work on my stance a little bit when I bench, and I will continue to kind of bench flat-footed. Um, the bench setup has always been something that I've kind of done, you know, I've kind of played with a couple of different ways. I've benched with my feet up, uh, I've benched, excuse me, with my, my, uh, my heels up, I've benched with my feet flat. Uh, so I'm just trying to do a more feet flat approach, but also just focus on getting a little bit wider just to give myself a little bit bigger of a base support uh, and help with the overall stability of the bench. So raw bench is going back up. Like I said, I worked up to 285 for a single. Uh, so that's again nothing earth-shattering. I'd like to eventually get my raw bench back up to over 315 uh, But again plenty of time since I'm not competing until November uh, from there I kind of noticed I was having some issues with my uh, My mad dog slingshot for whatever reason I just felt like I was not I was getting actually less help uh, than my red slingshot my original slingshot um, And I still like love the slingshot. It's it's still uh, I don't know if it's some uh, busted some I know I heard some pops I don't know if some of the seam seams kind of were defective or whatever, but um, I really felt like I wasn't getting a lot out of it the last couple of sessions. So uh, I ended up actually purchasing a bench freak band, uh, which I don't think would be a great tool for a raw, a raw lifter, uh, but I think this bench freak band is a great tool for a shirt lifter. Uh, it's gonna give you a little bit more help than a slingshot, uh, but also it's going to mimic kind of the bench groove a little bit more. Um, you really need to focus on spreading the material. You kind of put the material uh, just above uh, the elbows, and uh, I think it's going to help a shirt lifter kind of practice and get some more volume in without actually having to get in their shirt. Uh, I still probably will use the slingshot from time to time, and we will definitely uh, opt for using the slingshot. Most of our lifters 
our raw lifters and uh, they'll continue to use the reactive slingshot. Uh, and if someone's like kind of approaching or above a 400 pound bench, then we'll probably use the original slingshot. Uh, but yeah, the Bench Freak Band, I really like. Um, it felt really good and it definitely allowed me to almost feel like I was getting a warm up in my shirt uh, and helping the groove without actually getting in my shirt. So I think it prepared me a little bit better before I got in my shirt. Another thing that I've been kind of working on uh, doing is getting in my shirt earlier. So normally I would take 365 either with a slingshot or uh, with with boards or something like that. I just elected to get in my shirt right away just to get some more practice. I've just been trying to get a little bit more volume actually in the shirt. Uh, so in the past I would kind of wait. Uh, so getting more singles in the shirt, getting more sets in the shirt, I think is going to help kind of improve the technique a little bit. Uh, so I did 365. Um, to uh, two board height. Uh, and then I did, I wanna say I did 405, I believe to a one and a half board. So that was a half board less than I did the, the, my first session in this shirt. I've been using this Rage X uh, that I got from Peter Ladis, uh, Peter by your gym. So I kind of snagged that from him. Uh, back in um, January uh, with mom's Christmas cookies, I was about 15 plus pounds heavier and I could not fit in the bench shirt. So now I can actually fit in it, so that's good. Uh, so it's fitting me pretty well right now. So time will tell if it ends up fitting me better. You know, I still have some weight to lose, so I'm hoping that it'll still fit. So I'm trying to do a lot of upper body hypertrophy work. So as I drop body fat, I hopefully will continue to keep my arm and kind of chest and back size pretty similar. So that's going to be a little bit of a struggle, but it's fitting good for right now. Uh, and then from there, I did, um, I want to say I did uh, 425. I want to say maybe to a one board, it might have been also one and a half, I forget. I could be wrong, you'll see it with the board. So I just know the weight. So 425 moved really good. So I elected to try to get something close to touching. Uh, so I made a little bit of a bigger jump. Uh, I was a little bit more conservative, but since 425 moved really good, uh, I'd elected to go 455 for my final set. I did it to a half board and that went really smooth. And like I said, all things considering, it's, nothing, it's on an earth shattering number, especially in a bench shirt, but for me, I only benched 415 um, at my contest in April, so that's a good 40 pounds above what I did in April, uh, and I still have not even maxed out my raw strength. So really, really happy with the 455 and how that moved. Um, I think that it's I'm on my way back to getting back to like a 500 pound plus shirted bench, so I'm really excited about that. So I moved well. Um, I felt like my technique was really solid, uh, good stable lockout just good control overall so very happy with how things went uh, and then from there i did a couple i did a set of four and then a set of five with the bench freak band i think the first set i just didn't wait long enough um, to kind of let rest myself and i was just kind of still playing with the groove uh, but just getting some some volume some volume there and then it's kind of finished off with some accessories so again i think the bench freak band is going to be helpful to kind of practice the shirt groove a little bit I'm going to continue to work on improving my raw bench uh, to get to that past 315, so that'll allow me to have a, bit, a little bit of a higher potential to get uh, you know more carryover out of my shirt. Uh, and I will continue to kind of probably keep the reverse grip benching in for a little bit. Um, definitely was a uh, between you know squatting 800 at my meet and um, and then benching in the shirt uh, a couple of days later. Uh, I'm pretty tired, uh, like for kind of fatigued. So that's kind of one of the things, the considerations. Uh, when you're in a clip lifter, sometimes you don't get a sore, but you get that neural fatigue. Uh, so that can definitely be a factor. So that's something to consider. You're going to have to up your sleep and things like that. Because, uh, you know, more food and stuff is not necessarily going to help you recover your brain. Uh, but getting better sleep and things like that is going to be key. So that's going to be something I'm going to be focused on moving forward. But best bench workout, uh, like I said, you always try to see the silver lining. I've uh, been making really good progress. Um, I'm still not 100%. I'm still not back to baseline. Uh, but I'm getting closer and closer. And I think uh, a good lesson here is just to be patient um, and not try to like get ahead of yourself, uh, listen to your body. I've made a very slow and steady progression um, with the bench and it's, it's paid off big time. So, uh, especially with the bench press, you know, it's a small, the shoulder's a smaller joint um, than like the hip, for example. So it's, it's probably more wise to be a little bit more conservative with your jumps and your attempt selection and just uh, your progression in general throughout your training program. So progressing the bench press a little bit slower and more methodical. Uh, something like squat and deadlift, you can kind of make bigger kind of jumps week to week and month to month uh, just because the joints are bigger, the muscles are bigger. Uh, so it's something to consider moving forward, even if you are a bigger bencher. Uh, again, you just got to consider the architecture of your body and 
the joints kind of involved in that, in that movement. So pretty happy with that. Um, as far as dietary changes, I'm going to eliminate some dietary fat to kind of put myself in a little bit of a calorie deficit. So I eliminated, you know, I've been eating like six eggs a day. Um, so I'm going to take that out of my diet. I'm also going to be a little bit more conscious of, you know, the type of meat, the red meat. I'm going to, uh, you know, opt for something that's, you know, 96% uh, for like during the week. Um, so I've been using anywhere from like 93 to 97% uh, lean ground beef. Uh, so I'm going to try to just pick, uh, be more conscious of picking like leaner cuts when I can. Uh, and then that'll help put me in a little bit more of a calorie deficit. And then from there, if I feel like I'm stalling, I'll probably add a little bit of cardio in. Uh, but I'm going to try to kind of play one card at a time and not uh, kind of overdo things. So uh, that's kind of the plan, uh, slow and steady. I'd like to get my body weight down to like 215 and then kind of cruise from there. So that's going to be like if I lose another 10 to 15 pounds on average, that'll put me at 215 and it'll put me in striking distance for a water cut. So uh, that'll be a little bit more manageable. So I don't want to get too light, but I also don't want to have to do like another 20 plus pound cut if I could afford, afford it. So uh, 215 is kind of the target goal over the next couple of months. And then uh, we'll, we'll uh, be on our way to the road nut to 198. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for supporting me along my journey. Uh, if you want to get future content, please subscribe. If you want to support the program, please check out the links below. Thank you guys for watching. Until next time, stay strong, and I'll see you soon.